Alrighty, here we go with number one. 60 beats a minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back at sixty. One, two, three, four. got some hand shifting going on here so bar number one you will shift when you go up to the B string to your index finger bar number two shift over for the 15 with the pinky and then when you go down to the G string you're gonna hit it with your pinky again I know you uh, your hand works with going pinky middle first that's fine Mine works with the ring finger instead, so that's not a thing to be concerned with. What is a thing to be concerned with is avoiding this, that hitting uh, a note twice with the same finger when you don't have to. So we try and avoid that as much as we can. Obviously there, we kind of have to. You could say, well, what about using all four fingers? Well, that complicates things a little bit. In fact, I would say it complicates things more than needed. So that's an exception um, as far as not using the same finger twice in a row to go to a new note. So sometimes we have to, uh, sometimes we don't, and we're trying to avoid doing that. But let's say you did do the hand or like use the same finger twice for uh, two notes in a row here in bar number two. Let's say you did this. Um, well, then you'd have to side shift your hand down an extra time, so hitting three notes in a row with the same finger. So at least doing it this way kind of minimizes that. Um, and it's also just a handy way of looking at stuff in terms of... So basically, I'm looking at it like that and the, the scale shapes when I'm doing these things. Same thing here. So I'm thinking, if I was to repeat that, you know what would I do? I'd keep shifting the hand back and forth like that. So I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know. Here we go with 100. One, two, whoa, I didn't count that worth a darn. One, two, three, four.
and add 140. One, two, one, two, three, four. Right. Number three. Same rhythm, different notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. like last time no big speed goal to get here just get it up to where you can without hitting extra strings so here we go at 60 one two three four Okay, um, so as far as the other stuff, writing out the uh, suspended fours, um, contemplating if I should show you what you probably come up with. I guess I could do it, but if you haven't written them out yet, don't watch the rest. No cheating, no cheating. All right, so the C suspended four, He's taking the C chord, you're going to raise the E up on the D string here to F, and the high E string, you're going to raise that up to an F as well. Technically, you could also do it like this. You just have an extra G in there. Most likely, that'll be the one you come to first, following the simple steps of identifying the note needs to be changed and raising it up to the next note and key. So D suspended 4, you already know that. We just played that in the previous exercise. E suspended 4, you're going from the E minor chord, taking the G note here, raising it up to the A note. F, we're taking the A note, got to raise it up to a B, which makes it a sharp 4. I 
just change the damn action on this thing to uh, get rid of that SS buzz. Another thing you can do, uh, kind of go along with how the F suspended second is. I think that's how I diagrammed it after this was basically ruled out, getting the thumb over there. Um, you might want to just do the F suspended four this way as well, or F suspended sharp four. I screwed that up. F suspended sharp four. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong here? Right, just there we go. Yeah, go from here to here. You could also just do something like this. Really love that sound. Uh, anyway, the G major chord up to the G suspend a second. We only have the one third interval right here, the B note. Just raise it up a half step. You could also just kind of scoot it over like that. That feels a little easier to hold. But either way, those are the notes there. Three, three, zero, zero, three, three. A suspend a four, you already know that one. And then the last one, taking the diminished chord. There's a couple ways you can do this. First thing I would do is just following those steps without making any extra steps. So where is our flat three? It's on the B string, which is a D note, needs to be raised up to an E. So that gives us a one, four, flat five. So we'd have a B suspended four, flat five. The other thing you could have done, because we, well, because of the key we're in and the open strings that we can utilize, you could have just taken your ring finger off and strummed like that, because what that does, we uh, take the D note, lower that, and basically change that to a B note, so we have two Bs of the same octave being played there, and then just hit the open E string, that's your four. So you can do that. So a B suspended four flat five are the same notes as an E suspended flat second. So like I said, every suspended second chord is a suspended four, depending on what you consider the root note, and vice versa. And I think that's pretty damn cool. So, I hope you like that idea too. We can geek out on theory. Um, so I think that covers everything. But if any questions come up, please let me know. I'll see you again Monday.